All right, everybody, welcome back to the 12,576th ranked TV program in the history of the planet. I am Brian Lee Durfee, a author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. And today I'm going to be reviewing The Rise of Endymion, book number four in... Dan Simmons' magnificent, award-winning Hyperion Cantos of four books comprising of Hyperion, book one, book two, The Fall of Hyperion, book three, Endymion, and last but certainly not to be considered the least, book four, The Rise of Endymion. Now I have left, I have read and reviewed each of these books on my channel, so if you want to watch my review of any of the first previous three books, just type in my last name, Durfee, the title of the book, and the review will magically show up upon your uh, television or computer screen. That's how the internet works. So, God, as I was reading this book, I usually take notes as I'm reading the books, for the videos, so I can get so the details somewhat right, and things like that. And as I'm writing notes, I'm thinking to myself, I can't t t say that, because it's going to spoil the book one, two, three. I can't, oh, I can't mention that, I can't mention this, can't mention that. I mean, so I just didn't, I just abandoned the notes. So this is probably going to be a, one of my shorter reviews, because I'm just going to gush about how great the ending to the series was, and how great the series was overall in general terms. I mean, there's so much going on in this series. For those of you who have already read it, you know what I'm talking about. There's so many ideas, so much plot, so plot-heavy, so character-driven, just mind-blowing in scope. It's like one of those things that if you're a writer, don't... Uh, I mean, this is Dan freaking Simmons. He can pull this off. Don't try this type of storytelling at home on your own. It's dangerous, and you probably ain't going to survive the attempt. That's how fucking awesome and detailed and great this series just is overall. And I think it gets better with each book. A lot of people say book number one is the superstar of the series. I actually like book one quite a bit, book two quite a bit more, book three quite a bit more than the other two, and this one is probably the best of them all. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just going to gush about it without giving spoilers. I thought, you know, since all the notes that I was taking were going to be spoilery, that I would just read you the back jacket copy because that gives us a sense of what we can expect in the book. And um, it's spoiler free. So let's do it. The magnificent conclusion to one of the greatest science fiction sagas of our time. The time of reckoning has arrived, as a final genocidal crusade threatens to enslave humanity forever, a new messiah has come of age. Just so you know, if you're unfamiliar with these books, this is grand, epic, Star Wars, Star Trek-esque, Dune-like, Frank Herbert-like, epic space opera, space adventure, full of mystery space battles, starships, time travel, crazy, crazy cool alien creatures with magnificent alien powers. Let's keep reading. Anyway, a final genocidal crusade threatens to enslave humanity forever. A new messiah has come of age. She is Ania, one of my favorite characters in the series. She is Ania, and she has undergone a strange apprenticeship to those known as the Others. Now her protector, Raoul Endymion, one-time shepherd and convicted murderer, must help her deliver her startling message to her growing army of disciples. But first they must embark on a final spectacular mission to discover the underlying meaning of the universe itself. The underlying meaning of the universe itself, folks. That is what we're... T Not only does this have starships and star battles, but the underlying meaning of the universe itself. And this does delve into a lot of theories on God, 
the existence or non-existence of God, how people worship God, how their worship affects the way they run their lives and, and, and um, treat each other. It's just got everything you could possibly want in a story. So anyway, but they are being followed on their journey by the mysterious Shrike, who has been our sort of, I don't know if he's really been our antagonist throughout this series of four books, but he's certainly been the main pivotal sort of um, thing that, uh, anyway, he's a, the Shrike, monster, angel, ain't, okay, start over. The Shrike, monster, angel, killing machine? What is it? The Shrike, about to reveal the long-held secret of its origin and purpose. Well, we get to find out what it is. And on the planet of Hyperion, where the story first began, the final revelation will be delivered, an apocalyptic message that unlocks the secrets of existence and the fate of humankind in the galaxy. Oh my gosh. Like I said, so full of plot ideas and, and, and meaningful little passages. Some of the little passages I write down because they're just absolutely divine and full of wisdom. Uh, like I said, if you're a reader, get ready for an epic journey that is just massive in scope. This is not light reading. It's not easy reading. It's not like sitting down and watching Guardians of the Galaxy with a box of popcorn where everything is just spoon-fed to you on a silver tray. This is, you've got to read these and use your brain and think about what's being said. And, 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 and though there are those Guardians of the Galaxy, Star Wars-y type of action sequences, keep in mind there are also those spots in the story where you just slow down and think about your own existence and what's going on with these characters and you just your mind is just blown and like i'm telling you if you're a reader that's what you're in for if you're a writer and you want to write science fiction you ain't dan freaking simmons yet so don't try this at home um but god does it inspire me to want to do something like this massive just with, I mean, I try with my own books, but then I read something by Dan Simmons and I realize I ain't even Dan freaking Simmons. I ain't even. I mean, oh my God, just absolutely amazing stuff. So that wraps up my review of all four books. So I have reviewed on the channel the entire Hyperion Cantos. And now we get to move on to a lot of the other Dan, because I got every Dan Simmons book right there. And so we will be reading and reviewing all of those eventually. Um, you know, because he is Dan freaking Simmons. And I give book four a solid 10 out of 10, just like I gave all these other books. There you have it.